If the only tool you have is a hammer, it is tempting to treat all problems as if it were a nail. With a two-handed sword, there will be no problems. Add the unequivocal rage of an anime protagonist and you'll truly get to live out the experience of Berserk quite literally. Whack and yell at people, what's there more to say? The Barbarian is situated as a melee class that does high DPS in exchange for survivability and ranged. S sort of. Barbarian doesn't follow any rules, to be honest. F the rules. It's so overpowered right now, you might as well just call this class Thornbarian, because you'll be smashing. Who cares about survivability when you can literally one-shot most mobs? If that doesn't work, you hit them again. And even again? Three attacks in one turn? Okay, Larian, what the f*** are you thinking? Your armor class even literally scales off of your bonuses, and later in the game, you'll just be rolling half-naked, slamming down tall drinks of water, harder than your mom at New Year's. Just lots and lots of poor decisions. So what race do we pick? Well, we pick the story character, that's what. Why? Because because it's the story, bro. You'll get far more options than text and conversation to make the game more fun and metagamey. What? You play this game for role-playing purposes and not power gaming? And you skip all the dialogue like some sort of barbarian giga chat? Bottom. Day one, day two, day three. Need to go on? Why are you even looking at the guides then? If you're dead set on creating a custom character, the only true options you have is to pick a half-orc, human, or I guess a dwarf. All of these provide essential benefits for your class. Half-orc gives you the crits and DPS, as well as a pretty useful passive in the form of not being able to die when you die. This is sort of useful, but more often than not, you'll probably be in status effect hell. Oh, Larian, we love you. So you'll just most likely die anyways, but hey, it's it's neat. Oh, did I mention crits? You roll triple value when you crit. There's a feat that you will pick up unless you're trying to f*** with me. Later on, that you will give you another attack once you kill something. So the more often you do extremely high amounts of damage, the better, since you will proc that trait and be on your merry way. Humans give you the ability to not be absolutely atrocious as an overall character, aka Mr. Bland and Generic. Uh, carry capacity increases by a quarter is also absolutely useless since you can drop things off at places and instantly teleport items from one character to another. What are you gonna pack mule? Every single painting you come across? Dwarfs? Dwarfs? Dwarves? Dwarves have some nice defensive bonuses in the form of feats and abilities, mostly around giving you either armor proficiency, more health, or just, you know, more advantageous checks for status effects. But I mean, come on, a two-handed barbarian dwarf half the size quarter less the walking distance what's next an intelligent barbarian gnome build you know what gnome what i'm saying <laughs> yeah no 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 you don't for your spec loadout you want to basically put points in constitution and strength to be effective strength lets you do cool stuff like kill things faster and roll for attack checks what does that mean i mean you, you just add more damage to your damage that yeah that's, that's that's about it constitution constitution is a thing that makes you not die because because you'll be there in the midst of things Always. You're a barbarian. Come on now. Dexterity should be your third priority. It helps with some extraneous things like being a fast boy and picking out traps in the environment or just a doujinshi lineup. You kind of become like an overall character after putting points in dexterity because there's... I don't think I've ever seen a single constitution check so far. Those are incredibly rare in D&D. Yeah, but your, your mileage may vary. The rest... Well, let's just say we aren't aiming to win any beauty pageants, or the audience, or just anyone in general, really. TLDR, 18 strength, 18 con, 16 dex, if you're going anything but human. If you're a human, 17 of those instead. That's, that's about it. For skills, okay, let me pull up the skill list here for the different traits. Yeah, exactly. Look look at that. Look at look at those amazing amounts of variety that we got here going. Yeah, you're going you're going athletics, then acrobatics, then it, you're you're role playing as whoever the f you want to be. I never promised this class was deep, only that this class was what? Which leads to the first subclass of this guy, girl, other berserker. Adding that hard R at the end really takes guts, which you'll need a whole bunch of them because you kind of just go in and pray you hit things the harder than they hate you. Angrily. If you're the type of person who gets angry when you're winning because it's too easy, or even angry when you're losing to deal more damage, of course, this will be the class for you. now get even angrier, and you start hitting twice per turn? Balance? What is balance? We're the type of metagamers that would insert the disc in Bloodborne and turn off our internet to skip the updates so we can do the intro skip. Right? Right? Abuse this while we can, brothers. This class is 100% going to get patched. So yeah, more specifically, Berserker specializes in adding DPS to your DPS. We get effectively a second attack, which gets penalties the more you use it. Who cares? It's a free second attack. That's like, that's like two characters attacking, bro. 
Another extremely fun tactic is just to throw stuff. There will be situations where you'll be trapped or out of range to hit, so all that junk that you've been carrying around in the form of outdated weapons, but we haven't resisted the urge to just pick absolutely everything off the ground. Yeah, that's that's our new ammo. Only things that are worth throwing are weapons. Everything else at the moment doesn't do much damage, but hey, you can pick up those weapons right back up afterwards. We got the looks, we got the power, we got the classic certified brains of a donkey with mad cow disease, because we just kind of ran out of skill points for intelligence. Or I guess this would be a prionic mad ass disease. Well, so much so that's actually one of the subclasses you can pick, Wild Heart. Granted, rather than generic anger, it's more like the anger of a bear, or eagle, or wolf, or whatever. Whoever's been misspecied by the public, because what? It doesn't look enough like the standard one you'd encounter in the wild? That makes you angry still. This is like role playing a sort of an enraged Snow White, and that's the impression I like to construct when utilizing this class. Uh, instead of songs, though, you just kind of scream at the wildlife and see what happens. You get good enough at this that they start to scream back, and congratulations, you can now talk to animals. The animal effects aren't anything to write home about in terms of damage. They're far more supportive than anything, depending on your playstyle. If you put a crossbow to my head and made me choose, I'd probably go with the tiger or wolf. You'll find that jumping over your allies and quarters becomes mandatory later on, as well as over nasty effects on the ground. Plus that tiger every turn bleed cleave. Yeah, okay, Larian. Turn my fury into a furry. Wolfheart is good for melee builds to give advantage to your allies, but come on, we're barbarians. There's like only one I in barbarian and no Wii's. I guess that means there's no W's either, I guess, but also no L's. So that means someone else took that while we barbarried them into the ground. What if you're so angry that you run away and end up in a fate crossing and your intense emotions lead you to just kind of absorb the magical properties around you? We call them wild magic, because you're not you when you're angry. You're better. You're actually a primordial soup of mystified energy that lashes out at people. No, mom. This isn't just a phase. This was intentional. But what isn't intentional is the random magical powers you get when you rage. Stuff like teleportation as a bonus action, forcing vines all around you to grow, ability to shoot radiant beams that do d6 damage, summon random minions that explode at the end of your turn. The inconsistency here, I, I don't like. You, you might as well be playing Time Wizard and blowing up your side of the board every time you rage. Those things should be in reverse order, in my opinion. I do not personally like this subclass, but hey, you meta game the way you want to, bro. For feats, two are basically mandatory. Great Weapon Master and Savage Attacker. Okay, we're playing for DPS, boys and girls. We will be killing things, most likely. The mages kind of tickle things to death, so if you are on a unit, we will be doing a lot of the slaughtering. Pop a quick rager, reckless attack, preparation, we just increased our attack bonus by like 10 for no real loss. What does that mean? Extra freaking hits, baby. Kill something as a barbarian? Yeah, you get to go again. Savage attacker makes you able to roll twice and take the highest number. Okay, that's literally a 50% damage increase on average. Okay, not really. Here's here's some actual maths on this. Here's some quick summation maths. Okay, uh, here's the non-nerd way to do go about this. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the average roll for uh, D6 dice is you get a 3.5. Uh, best of two, the average is a 4.472. Divide those numbers, you get a 27.7% increase in your damage. Yeah, but let's go a step further. Let's use our online test taker buddy, Wolfram Alpha. Advantage rolls scale with the higher dice numbers like so. So this is me plugging in the above summation for n sides of a dice and dividing by the usual average chance of rolling a dice, which is simply half of the device plus 0.5. Okay, so in layman's terms, it gets better the higher the number of sides a dice has. This applies to all classes, so this info could be useful. So TLDR for two-handed sword barbarians, which roll D12. That's like a 30% DPS increase, baby. Perfect, okay. So to recap battle tactics of the barbarian, you yell, you jump or run forward, then you attack. Wow, you're now the MVP of the party in terms of DPS. There's much more to be discovered. Cringe. <clears throat> but this should get you through the early levels. Your power only grows stronger as more and more guides and meta-breaking discussions are released and come out by the community. Jesus fucking Christ, this is a saturated market. I am so glad I'm not late to this party.